be another mild night, especially in southeastern Kelowland with another round of 50s and mid 50s at that for lows. A couple of isolated showers also not out of the question. To the west, though, cooler with overnight lows falling into the 40s. That also goes for north central and northwestern portions of Kelowland. For your day tomorrow, we're also looking at another mild day. 70s hang up for one more day to the southeast, but now we try to cool down north and west. More on that coming up, but until then, first of four starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. Time is ticking down for South Dakotans to register to vote. A look at today's deadline coming up. Plus, how a satellite voting location in Iowa is helping people with disabilities vote. And then coming up in the next half hour, diving into the world of artificial intelligence, how it could benefit small businesses. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. This afternoon, we're learning more about a Nebraska man's alleged crime spree that spanned three states. Authorities say that Sean Carlos Payne, a man who was wanted in Omaha for assault and child abuse, drove hundreds of miles to western South Dakota. He's accused of kidnapping a Meade County girl and taking her to Wyoming, where he was involved in a chase with law enforcement. This afternoon, with South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley, along with the Meade County Sheriff. The child abduction response team, the training that we do, how Meade County handled it is exceptional uh, and again made a, a tragic situation from being worse. We are going to take a closer look at the alleged crimes and the multi-state response that led to the arrest. That's coming up on Kelo Land News at 5. A Rapid City man has pleaded guilty to first-degree murder in the death of a 54-year-old woman. In court this morning, 65-year-old Brent Kurtzman admitted to the premeditated murder of Julie Fisk. He faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole when he's sentenced next month. The state agreed not to seek the death penalty at the wishes of the victim's family. Fisk was beaten to death while she slept in her Rapid Valley home in February of this year. Kurtzman also admits to setting fire to her home afterwards. As part of the agreement, a charge of first-degree arson was dismissed. We're also following developing news out of Sturgis this afternoon. Mayor Angela Wilkerson has resigned effective immediately. In a letter to citizens and city staff, she wrote that she's faced constant opposition from city council members and intimidation from certain business leaders. The letter goes on to say that she is stepping back so the attacks can stop and that the city can move forward instead of being pushed back. We uh, will hear more from the mayor, and we're going to hear from one of the people behind the petition to replace her. Tyler Lauder is working on that story for Kelo Land News at 6. The T Volunteer Fire Department responded to a unique call on Sunday. According to a post on Facebook, a trailer hauling bees was damaged near T, leading to aggravated bees escaping from their containers. Firefighters used water to cool off the shipping container and Calm down the bees. Wow. Yeah. You, you don't never, expect that, do you? You never know what you're going to get uh, when you're a first responder. Yeah. Well, you never never, never know what we're going to get in the weather department either. Oh, yeah. What's the story today, Adam? That's warm again. That's basically stop you if you've heard that one. It's been that way for a better part of the fall season. Uh, but we are going to try and uh, cool down a little bit as we head into the middle part of the week. Still above average, but closer than what we're seeing, oh, I don't know, today. For example, it's 81 degrees in downtown Sioux Falls with a south wind at 15 miles per hour. Uh, 81 is our average high around the end of August and the start of September, just to put that number into perspective. Uh, from there, we'll head out west. It's not as warm, but still well above average out in Rapid City, 77 uh, light and variable breeze out there as well. Basically across the board, it has been warm and unseasonably warm at that. We're at 78 for Mitchell over the Huron and Brooklyn. Three in Spencer over toward northwestern Iowa. Ortonville and Aberdeen at 79 apiece. 77 Pier, winter in Rapid City. 72 in Spearfish. And the outliers on the cool side at least, and I'm using that term loosely, are Custer and Pine Ridge at 67 and 65 respectively. 
We have had a bit of a breeze out of the south at 15 to 20 miles per hour in many locations for central and eastern Kelloland. Out to the west, it has been a quieter day overall. We do have some fair weather clouds out there, mid to high level stuff that we're just dealing with. A little bit more trying to stream on up from Nebraska along an upper level trough. That's going to act as a track of sorts, for lack of better terms, for any uh, scattered showers are going to try and make their way into the area. Nothing yet. However, we do still have that opportunity for an isolated shower, maybe even a rumble of thunder along the uh, Nebraska border later on this evening. So we'll watch that. Uh, tomorrow, though, another Warm day, mid 70s for much of southeastern Kelowind, but notice the wind direction the northwest. That's going to help bring in some of that cooler air, especially up to the northeast, where we'll have highs mainly in the 60s to low 70s. Firmly in the 60s, though, the farther west and northwest you go, even a couple of 50s up toward the Black Hills. But again, notice that wind. It is going to be making its presence known. We'll talk about the rest of your seven-day forecast, which features a few more small chances for rain as we get through the hour. Thank you, Adam. Well, time is running out for South Dakotans who want to vote in the November election but haven't registered yet. Today at 5 o'clock local time is the deadline to register to vote in the state. You can deliver your registration forms in person at your county auditor's office before it closes tonight. Well, many people are taking advantage of the early and absentee voting. In Iowa, a satellite voting location offered people with disabilities a more accessible way to vote. Bob Bauman with our sister station in Des Moines reports. You can imagine voting can be tough if you can't read the ballot. We're ready to go. That's why these machines are set up, designed to help folks like Mary Sheets, who is blind. And it just automatically has it through the headphones and it'll read it to people. And then we have a keypad on the side and they can use that to scroll just like a TV remote, you know, up and down and sideways. Every polling location in the state is required to have one. But at this satellite location, they have about a dozen, creating a space where disabled Iowans have more access to vote. Because we're people too, and we should all be involved in some way that we can. A study conducted by Rutgers University after the 2020 election shows that disabled Americans are one of the fastest growing voting demographics in the country. And the Iowans showing up today say they're thankful they have an accessible place to cast their ballot. We want to vote here and uh, not go downtown and vote at the county auditor's office. It's just kind of a center hub and just easier to get to. Independence is one of the foundations the United States was built on. It can be easy to lose sight that not everyone has yes. personal independence. Hold that sucker up and smile. Hey, even the blind can do it. <laughs> Which is why this group treasure the ability so many can take for granted. This is it? Okay. I have voted. Everybody come out and vote. As Bo Bauman reporting, Iowans can contact the county auditor's office to find out about satellite voting locations in their area. In North Carolina, more than one million people have already voted in the November election. The turnout represents about 13 percent of North Carolina's 7.8 million registered voters. The Tar Heel State joins Georgia, which recently announced one million voters had cast early ballots and broke state turnout records.